Disenfranchised grief. What is it exactly? In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about disenfranchised grief and what it looks like. There are four situations that may cause this type of grief. When a person feels inhibited to express their grief due to shame or societal norms of appropriateness, this can cause disenfranchised grief or grief that is, for whatever reason, deemed inappropriate. There are many factors involved in creating the feelings of shame or unwillingness to express grief. When the relationship with the deceased is not recognized socially, this can cause disenfranchised grief. Some examples might be a non-traditional relationship, such as an adulterous affair, a secret homosexual relationship, or a heterosexual cohabitation. This might cause shame for the bereaved. This shame can cause them to refrain from grieving the deceased. It can cause them to refrain from expressing their grief. Because the bereaved might feel the relationship was socially inappropriate, they may not feel like participating in the grieving process. And this may cause prolonged grief, which leads to depression. Another situation that might cause disenfranchised grief is when the loss is not acknowledged by others. These are some examples here, a miscarriage, an abortion, death of a pet, or even when the ex-spouse dies. When a miscarriage or an abortion occurs, some people may not see this loss as genuine in comparison to the death of a born child or adult. Sometimes the death of a pet can cause shame and grieving even though today pets are seen as more than just animals, but actual companions. So society seemed to consider this loss more genuine. When I was in grief support, there was a couple there who had lost a child by miscarriage, and they were in deep grief. They had tried for many years to get pregnant, so when they lost their baby daughter in utero, it set them on their grief journey. Some of the people in the group, including myself, struggled with this because we had lost adult loved ones. But as I listened further to their story and saw their grief and how genuine it was, I began to really grieve with them. In many cultures, pets aren't seen as uh, in high regards. We had friends who were from Kenya and they came over to our house and were appalled that we had dogs inside the house because in their culture, dogs remained outside. So grieving the loss of a pet may not seem genuine to other people, you know, may not see, seem like a genuine loss to people of other cultures. And then the loss of an ex-spouse, that's another loss that may not be acknowledged by others, leading to the bereaved feeling shame in grieving. Another situation that might cause disenfranchised grief is when the grievers are not recognized. Sometimes a funeral service is closed. Only family may attend. So coworkers or friends of the deceased may feel disenfranchised because they cannot participate in the service. And sometimes families feel that children, young children, should not be allowed to participate in a funeral service. Or if an elderly person is too old to make it to the funeral, they become disenfranchised. Or if a family member is mentally impaired, sometimes they're not allowed to attend a funeral service too. But there are many rituals now that solve this problem. Wakes and memorials or celebrations of life are helpful to alleviate this type of grief because these rituals allow for friends and co-workers to attend and participate 
in the service when a formal funeral service may not be open to them. These types of rituals can also allow for the mentally impaired, young children, and elderly adults to also participate. So that's why sometimes memorial service or candlelight vigils, wakes, and celebrations of life are very important to help alleviate disenfranchised grief. Another situation that can cause disenfranchised grief is when the death is not socially sanctioned. When the death is not socially sanctioned, people feel ambivalent or awkward about the deceased, and this can cause shame for grievers. They may be unwilling to socially contribute to the support of the bereaved. In the case of the Columbine shootings, many did not feel comfortable grieving for the two teens who died by their own hands. These two teens had caused such a massacre. Or when a death row inmate is put to death, many feel many might feel that grieving for a murderer is not socially sanctioned, and it can cause disenfranchised grief. Other examples of disenfranchised grief, when there's a loss by suicide, sometimes the grievers are filled with shame, regret, and guilt, so they don't want to express their grief. Back in the 80s and 90s, a death by AIDS caused shame for some family members, and they did not want to acknowledge their grief. As I mentioned earlier, sometimes the death of an ex-spouse can make a person feel shamed that they are grieving. Or when there's a death caused by a murder and there's a very public investigation, this can sometimes cause disenfranchised grief. After the shooting at Columbine High School in 1999, one of the shooter's mothers, Sue Klebold, experienced disenfranchised grief because of the shame she felt in grieving for her son after he had committed such a horrific crime. The need to grieve for her son, whom she also felt such anger toward, caused much conflict within her. But today she has learned to process through her grief toward recovery by helping other parents with troubled teens look for early warning signs of possible violent behavior. She was able to turn a horrible situation into a way to help others. There are, psychological, there are psychological factors that come with disenfranchised grief. Fear, shame, anxiety, anger, regret, depression, and despair. With disenfranchised grief, the symptoms of grief are intensified because grievers are sometimes unable to be with the deceased through the dying process, like an ex-spouse or if it's part of an adulterous affair or they're not even allowed to attend the funeral service. There may be psychological issues involved from these complications. Depression, anxiety, fear, and despair can be exaggerated by these circumstances. But the various rituals that are out there by having wakes or memorial services that are open to those who may be unrecognized by the family, these disenfranchised grievers can feel included and even feel comfortable enough to express their grief. For suicides, teen deaths, or when grievers are not acknowledged, large open gatherings like these rituals can provide a safe place for them to grieve. After John Lennon was killed, candlelight vigils happened near his home in New York City. This allowed disenfranchised fans to feel as though they could participate in the death rituals of this very famous man whose funeral was going to be very private. Candlelight vigils also helped people after September 11th all across America. They provided a way to express their sorrow toward people they'd never even met, but it helped us feel connected to the victims' families who were deep in sorrow. Same thing with Princess Diana's loss. The ritual of just dropping off flowers at Buckingham Palace helped the disenfranchised fans 
grieve right along with the family. So rituals and memorial services, celebrations of life, have proven to be very helpful in helping disenfranchised grievers deal with their grief. I hope that this video has helped you learn a little bit more about what disenfranchised grief looks like and how it can be helped. People can still go through the grief process even though they're struggling with shame or guilt because their loss may not be acknowledged by society. It may not be deemed appropriate by societal norms. There are many resources available for you if you feel that you're unable to express your grief openly. Please conduct some research on your local and state websites for resources that can help you process through your grief.